Horror is something that's hard to do right. If it's too long, it puts you to sleep. If it's not scary enough, it could just be classified as a soap opera. And if it's too predictable, what was the point of even watching it in the first place? Now, obviously, I know that every single one of my subscribers has a doctorate in horrorology. But just in case some of you need a refresher, I did want to remind you about spook theory. As coined by Billy T. Horror, the inventor of the genre back in 1625. It's pretty simple, really. All you have to do is remember the word spook. Is it short enough? Obviously, we don't want a horror story that's longer than real life, because if that's the case, the only real horror is the passage of time, which will inevitably get us all in the end. Does it make you pensive? Nobody wants to experience a story that doesn't lead to deep thought. If I wanted non-creative linear horror stories, I would just watch the Channel 5 News. Am I right? Is it over the top? Of course, if I'm reading an act that is mostly fiction, I want some spooky, unrealistic stuff in it. Show me demons, witches, Santa's bloodthirsty reindeer, etc., etc. Then, of course, there's... Ugh. This one is more of a feeling. I'm sure I don't have to explain it. But you remember in the beginning of Texas Chainsaw Massacre where they picked up that hitchhiker and she blasted herself? That feeling of distaste you get when you're when you're so taken aback it makes you do a uh, an inaudible wince. And of course, K stands for twists. Keep me guessing. You know? So why am I reminding you of this? Because today, we're gonna be doing something fun. We're going to be reviewing the top-rated horror stories based on spook theory. And I know some of you may be asking, Scooch, which horror stories are we gonna be reviewing? Maybe the critically acclaimed horror films of Guillermo del Toro? Or aged classics like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein? And to that, I say, what are you, stupid? I said top-rated horror, written by the best of the best that would put Mary Shelley and Guillermo del Toro to shame. That's right. We're going to be reading two-sentence horror stories on reddit.com. Let's dive in. <laughs> I was going to the store to buy milk, and when I opened the fridge and find my father's remains. <laughs> Okay, starting off pretty strong here. Is it short enough? Well, the short answer is yes, it is. As most two-sentence horror stories are, but some of them do drag, believe you me. Does it make me pensive? Yes. It does in fact make me pensive because I do want to know how the father's remains got there. Over the top? Not really. I'm gonna have to deduct a point there because honestly, I'm pretty sure this has happened in real life. Something like The Godfather with less horses. Doesn't really ring me as ooh either because I've seen worse. On top of that, at least they were nice enough to put them in the fridge where they will decompose less fast. And finally, twists. I don't know, something about how the first sentence was stated made me feel like Father's Remains was coming in the second. I'm gonna have to give this one a 2 out of 5. Dad, it's time for you to open up your Christmas presents, I said jokingly. My smile turned to horror as his urn levitated and flew towards the tree. Okay, a lot of, a lot of dead dad shit here, huh? Is it short? It's short, kind of a run-on sentence at the end there, but I'll give it the point because it still is short enough. Pensive, I'm gonna have to give it a point for pensive as well, because what is the urn gonna do when it gets to the tree? Is it gonna start opening presents? And furthermore, do you have presents to give the urn? What if there are no presents? Does the urn get mad and start throwing shit around the room? Over the top, I'm gonna have to give it a half point for over the top because yes, it's kind of over the top, but only the urn levitated. If the tree levitated too, it would get the full point, but it's only the urn. Ooh, sorry, there's no ooh factor here. Nothing really gave me that sinking pit feeling in my stomach. Gonna have to take that point away. And as for twists, sorry, buddy, no twists either. That's gonna be a 2.5 out of 10. We're getting better? I was diving at 900 feet when a large goblin shark came up to me, but I was fine since they are fairly docile. My relief suddenly and violently changed to pure fear as I realized it was hiding behind me. This one, this one doesn't get the short point. As you can see, both of these sentences run on a lot longer than they should. 
doesn't make me pensive either. What, shark gonna eat you? Sometimes they hungry. It's not over the top either. I guess diving at 900 feet, is that possible? No feeling of ooh either, unless you have that phobia where you're afraid of under the water. And of course, no real twists. Unfortunately, this is our first zero out of five story. I'm sorry, Elfugen, you're gonna have to take that back to the Nintendo Labo, buddy. As I played Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for the PlayStation 2, I noticed something deeply horrifying. CJ turned to face me and said, Hey, <laughs> stop controlling me with that controller. <laughs> Yes, the story is short enough. Yes, the story does make me pensive because CJ has achieved sentience on the PlayStation 2, which is even more impressive due to the lack of technology. Is it over the top? Of course it is. Everything in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is over the top. Ooh, yes, but this one's not really a ooh. It's more of a ooh. <laughs> and of course, twists. Of course, that's a twist. That's a five out of five. I can't believe we already got one this early. Please don't eat me. I cried. <laughs> but, but it's too late. But it was too late. My dad was too far into his sleepwalk. <laughs> what the fuck, man? What is this? Life of Steven. What are you on about, man? Is it short? It is short. None of the sentences, none of the sentences run on. It is pensive because it makes me wonder how the hell your dad got so far without you being able to walk away. Over the top? Not really. I've seen some dads do worse. Ooh, no ooh factor here. Sorry, Life of Steven, take it back to the lab. And twists? No twists either. If you had said in the first sentence that he was a sleepwalker, then I would have probably felt there was more of a twist, but you kind of just dropped us in our head with that second sentence. Sorry, Life of Steven, you're only gonna get two points for this one. Not really gonna have its own uh, HBO Max film, but I digress. Hopefully, I'll never die, I say. Little did I know of the stage four cancer I was suffering from. Is that horror? I mean, that's just, a, that's just some shit that happens, buddy. That's just sad. I never knew how much I was missing until I realized I was in the majority of people watching this video that aren't subscribed. Honestly, I don't even have to go through spook theory on this one. It's gonna be a five out of five. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll really help us out. On top of that, we've been uploading daily, so make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss any bangers like this one. And finally, our last story of the day. I watched him scream because I killed him. <laughs>